Morning at NTV, we are live from Kampala Serena Conference Center. While many businesses and individuals are asking themselves how they will navigate this COVID-19 business environment and thrive post-COVID-19. Now, our partners at Stanbic Bank have some solutions for you. And to tell us more, we have Mr. David Mutaka, the bank, the bank's head of human capital, and Mr. Israel Adinitri the head of personal markets. I pose because the name is much more critical. <laughs> Good morning, gentlemen, and it's an honor to have you this morning. Good morning. Thank you. Morning, Andrew. Well, morning, uh, to start with, I will start with you, Mr. Mtaka. Yes. <clears throat> your bank's purpose, um, why you exist, if I should go by your slogan, um, is uh, Uganda is your home and your drive and your drive and you drive her growth. That's right. Yes. If I should be exact. That's now, in, those, in these unprecedented times that has brought the pandemic, everyone seems to be worried every now and then. What are you doing to keep your purpose and for Ugandans to stay afloat? Okay. Thank you very much, Andrew. I think that's mm. a very good place to start. Any mm. good business without a purpose at this time finds itself flaunting. Mm. And if you've heard what our president has said, it mm. is the time for war. Um, it's a people's war. So the first thing is to make sure we stay alive. And we've done our best to make sure our employees are safe. Mm. First and foremost, our customers are safe. They are able to transact um, mm. without bringing themselves into any harm. Mm. And of course, then the next level is beyond survival. Then what? Mm. Can I still transact? Can I still sell my goods? Mm. Can I still get paid? And <coughs> do I have the right connections to get these things going? Mm. So that's what we've really <coughs> focused on in the beginning around our purpose. Mm. But we do recognize that driving Uganda's growth post this mm. is also important. So we are thinking, we're talking to our customers around what will the future look like. Mm. Um, people talk about a low-touch economy, everything digital. Uh, we try to digitize and talk to our clients in the past about digital, mm. and not many of them were open to the idea. Okay. But right now you see some of the businesses that are prospering, and I don't want to mention names because they are ads, <laughs> uh, the names are, are the companies that are able now to do things online, mm. right? So you order your food online, you are able to deliver with maybe uh, one way and pay online. The other one is partnerships, mm -hmm. um, which businesses are creating partnerships. Your value chain has been disrupted. Mm, a lot. Uh, yes, so how do you create <coughs> new partnerships? And I think us continuing to educate our clients on those conversations mm. and providing the platforms for them to be able to do business, mm. but also keeping our employees safe and enabling them to be the best they can be in terms of their careers and mm. adding value. Is, is I think how we can best live our purpose. And that is a continuous journey. I don't think mm. you ever get there and say, I've now lived. You oh have yeah. to continuously keep disciplined, keep shape up. So mm. continuously test yourself with client feedback as well. Mm. Where clients come back to us and say, you're actually doing rubbish. And we say, thank you. Mm. Let us shift You that. improve. Yes. Absolutely. Now talking about the market, Stanbic Bank, um, Mr. Israel, was the first bank to send out an email <coughs> or even online mm. to say that uh, in COVID-19 our clients are going to deal with you case by case in case you have the loans, yeah? And we appreciate that. But looking at that, tell us how you're working towards relieving your borrowed clients, both businesses, and, uh, and how the pressure is like in this pandemic, how they, how they should hold up and what they should wait ahead of the day. Thank, thanks and good morning. Um, I think before I get to that, let me first thank our first response. Mm. Let me thank you guys. Mm. I think you're doing a very good job keeping us informed. Oh, yes. Let me thank our medical practitioners mm. who are putting their lives on the line to, to protect us, mm. to keep us alive. Um, I live with one, so I know that uh, the <laughs> families are impacted as well. Oh, yes, and, 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 and I really want to recognize and thank the first responders who have been mm. really good at this. To your question, uh, what you've asked, how are we helping our clients? How are we supporting them in this time? Mm. I think the key thing is to, to mention the fact that we're in this together. Mm. A bank is only as good as its customers. <laughs> yeah. True. Our customers are going through a hard time, and so are we. Mm. Because we, 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 we thrive when they thrive. When this started, the Bank of Uganda responded quickly Mm. and responded to help the clients. The, re the bank reduced what they call the benchmark rate, which is the CBR. Mm. And we responded immediately. As Stanbic Bank, we reduced our lending rate 
from 17.5 to 16.5. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. And that was for existing <coughs> borrowed clients. So we reduced your uh, borrowing rate by 1%, effective 1st of May. Mm. It means that you should have more money in your pocket from this month. The okay. amount of money you've been paying as a loan installment mm. for most of our clients, you should see a reduction at least by 1% mm. because we're in this together. Mm. And that's the first point. The second point when this happened, of course, with the guidance of the central bank, mm. we mm. gave clients what we call loan moratoriums. And what are those? This is a loan repayment holiday. To say, you know what, mm. you could be struggling. You could be having challenges as a result of this uh, pandemic. Mm. We, in discussion with you, will give you a holiday. What, what does that mean? It means <coughs> that you can spend one month, two months, three months, or even more mm. without paying, paying back the loan. And mm. there are two components of the loan. So you can choose, mm. A, do I pay interest, or do I pay principal, or do I pay nothing at all? Mm. And we're open to that depending on the client's circumstances. I'm sure every client so will go, I pay nothing at all, but I'll pay. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll pay. Yeah. So, so what we've done is to reach out to our clients, mm. and that's why we're here again, Mm. To let them know that this is available if you have been impacted. Mm. Number three is to restructure the loan. The loans, yes. Yes. Now, mm. uh, that's where the biggest problem is, Israel. I've been trying to track this conversation online. And many people, we are called by your banks or they sent out emails that please come and or you go to any other branch where you feel comfortable and you talk to your loan officer to go through all this. The restructuring. Yeah. Most people didn't understand that. Actually, some are scared to even come to the banks. So how do we build the confidence that they can come to the bank because these calls, these ladies who call and they say, hey, Andrew, I'm calling from Stanbic Bank. We, I'm going about your loan. You're like, oh, oh, oh the loan. Yes. So how do I be much more comfortable to go to any branch and I can talk to any loan officer? I, th I think the first thing is to look at your circumstances. Mm. How have you been impacted by this that's what you mean pandemic. case by case that's what i mean by case oh, by okay. case because uh, even when you extend that you still have to pay so you have to think about do i need to do this mm. if there's not been a material impact but what does restructure mean mm. so in 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 structure is actually the same thing like you can think about the structure the oh, house yeah. or something mm. like. so you're just changing we'll the go shape back again and we change it yeah just, just changing the shape uh, yeah. of the loan so what we've done uh, with restructuring is for instance you mm. could be having an overdraft and an overdraft is money you've taken out yeah. uh, for a very short time. Mm. You take it now and you bring it, say, after 30 days or after 60 days. Mm. But you had a shop that has closed. You're not able to, to generate money to bring back the money. Yeah. So we we'll change the shape, the, the structure of the yeah. loan, and probably give it a longer tenor. Give it, turn it into a, what we call a term loan where you pay mm. an install, a monthly installment as opposed to bringing back the money at once. Mm. Number two is that you had a loan which you had taken for 24 months. Mm -hmm. And you had supplied uh, or you were expecting stuff from China. Mm. China is... It's under lockdown. It's under lockdown. Mm. Or it's just beginning to ease actually. But mm. it's going to take a bit of time for the stuff to get mm. here. So in 24 months, you might not be able to pay the bank. Mm. So you come to, to the bank and we extend the loan, mm. say by another six months or by 12 months, as the case might be. Let, me, let mm. me say this, Andrew, and it is important that a clients understand the circumstances they are in. Mm -hmm. That, you know, before you think about the restructure, you think about, you know, your, your, the business. The best. Uh, the best, how mm. is it? How mm. is it and how is the bank going to help you? And that is very important. Uh, one thing that we did right from the beginning was A, we communicated to the clients that these options are available mm -hmm. uh, proactively. <coughs> so our clients know that mm. we can engage and understand. More important advice, mm. because that is a very important thing. So we can extend um, the loan where we don't have to. Mm. So that, 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 that's when advisory comes in. That you see in this case, you need a holiday okay. of three months. Mm. You don't need an extension, and, and that's useful. Have you seen emails where some employers have actually said that, um, well, because of the current circumstances we're going mm. through as the globe, <coughs> now we're going to, to possibly cut your remuneration by 35% or 20%. Mm. Um, how do we handle that? 
And I think that's what the personal circumstances uh, Israel is talking about. Mm. Your circumstances could be that your employer has cut your salary. Mm. Um, we've seen situations where it's, uh, it's a two-income family mm -hmm. and one is laid off. So all of a sudden you have one income. So whereas as, an, as a borrower with Stanbic, my circumstances mm. have not changed. At home they have changed because now we have one salary. Mm. Right? So we do consider all that. So where we've seen those circumstances is to say how do you best <coughs> respond to that as an individual. Mm -hmm. And in, in, the, in the past one year we've been talking about financial fitness. Mm. Um, and I think, um, what's his name, the gentleman from FUE was here, said not many people are prepared for this. Mm -hmm. But you think about financial fitness is how do you get fit for circumstances that might not be what you're used to right now. Mm. And employers will do what they have to do in this together, oh, yes. right? So there'll be the employers who can't manage and there'll be employers who can manage. Some have cut, mm. some, but some have cut completely. I saw one where they said no salary, but you can keep your medical oh, yeah. because the medical has already been prepared. And mm. I thought that was, it's a good way of mm. flexing. It's so a win-win. Yes. Uh, well, it's a lose-win, but mm. it's the best of, 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 of the, the circumstances. And, and I think we have to be empathetic to understand that I don't think anyone comes into this and says, let me see how to make David's life difficult. Mm. Say, so how do we make sure we survive this difficult part mm. and are able to come out on the other side mm. and do the right thing? Uh, <coughs> saying about that, so how do you support your clients in shaping their businesses post-COVID-19? Post-COVID-19, mm. I think the first thing is to say, where is my client? Okay. Every, every business needs a client. So for mm. ourselves, is where is my client? Mm. And we, the way we run our business, we look at sectors. So our s depending on the sector, from public sector to mm. infrastructure to telecoms to agriculture mm. and consumer. And of course, if you think about tourism, which is part of consumer, some sectors are impacted much harder mm. than others, right? So if you're in the consumer sector, the biggest challenge right now is your supply chain, mm -hmm. right? You're an essential service, but maybe you're far. So people will never walk to you. Mm. How do you deliver? Beer companies, well, buzz an essential closed. service, buzz are closed, <laughs> but people want to drink. So, <laughs> so as a client, <coughs> how do you think about that? And I think then the questions around working capital, around investment, around the digital platforms to mm. transact and get paid, mm. Um, become really, really important. Should we expect some, there are symposiums you usually hold or programs where you call in clients to travel that feedback. Should we expect these uh, shortly after COVID-19? Yes, and I know we have had a few. Uh, okay. We held one immediately, I think, we were the first bank to hold one. Mm. Uh, and our CEO spoke on that and we invited some experts mm. around what will the economy look like. Mm. It's a low-touch economy. Before we could be together and mm. you could, you know, trade everything. Right now it is low-touch. It's a touch. big disruption. It's a lot of disruption. Mm. And people spoke through that right from the central bank to say, mm. what's the, what do they look at the economy? Where is it going? Mm. They said, look, it's going to shrink 3.5%. Mm. What does that mean for your business? Um, to the global economy, IMF, um, what is tra travel going to look like? Mm. And that kind of thing. Okay, uh, uh, Israel, uh, <coughs> what is the bank doing about traders, especially importers? Ha. These ones in Chikubo, my very people, I love the people in the flea market because mm. they are in daily transactions. Yes. It's a penny for a day. What are the banks doing about this, especially Stand Big Bank? I think, I think to, 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 to what Dave has been saying, mm. especially how do you actually give them advice? Mm -hmm. um, we have a business incubator. Of course, mm. it has been disrupted in, in its previous yeah. form. What we used to call all the traders, all the business people in one room and take them mm. through. Of course, uh, part of the thinking we have now is that we can have these sessions actually remotely. Mm. And it has worked thus far, but I think okay. that's going to be the future. But specifically to the question you've asked about the traders. Yeah. The traders in China or who, was, who always fly to Back China. Back and forth. The planes are mm. grounded, so you can't go. Mm. So what we've done in, uh, in China, we have a super agent. Okay. Uh, the super agent called Gumao. Mm -hmm. What the super agent does is that you send them the order, they will look for the products you, look, you, you want, mm -hmm. you will send them the payment, they will ship the payments to you, the, the, the products to you in Kampala. So I don't Without, need to go? You do not need to go. Okay. You do not need to go. So to our traders, mm. to our business community. But is it cost friendly, Israel? It is. It <laughs> is because, you see, this is what happens when you're going to China. For most of our traders, mm. in the past they used to get cash, uh, put them in the bag, 
Yes. Go to China. Yeah. Pay for an interpreter. In cash. In cash. Yes. Look for products. Th they're middlemen. Yes. So there are many middlemen in China. Now we have cut all that. So that cost will mm. go away. Mm. It's a big risk. Yeah, that's a big risk. So the super agent in China will look for you, the, the goods in China, mm -hmm. because they are best in China. Mm. They will give you the right uh, quality mm. and they will ship it to you Not in you Kampala. Can. So mm. that, that, that's very useful, especially for our trading community. Mm -hmm. And I think it will help uh, for the greater part. So for someone to enroll for that kind of service, they need to go to their branches and they say, I need to be a part of this program or? That's one. So you mm -hmm. can go to one of our branches. You can go and meet your business banker. Mm -hmm. You can write to us. Mm -hmm. uh, you can um, call in our, uh, into our contact center. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, is, this is something that we've not just come up with now, mm -hmm. but the, the, for me, the opportunity is that now it's there, but we've just we've been doing it, uh -huh. and now you only need to come to the branch and ask how do I get mm. uh, Gimo in China to actually book my stock. Well, and Israel speaks with this <laughs> flair like he's already into the new normal. Paint for me a picture of the new <laughs> normal post COVID nineteen. How finance is entirely going to run, especially in business. <laughs> I don't know. Um, thanks, <laughs> thanks. The, I think the new normal is. Uh, is 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 here okay. uh, i think the future came because the stuff we've been doing in the past yeah i think part of it has changed okay and and and, they, and you asked me about the new normal i think the new normal is going to be more um virtual mm -hmm. okay that's that's why i'm talking about the guy who is best in China booking stuff for you here. Okay. I think it is going to be, uh, David was talking about working from home, mm. okay? Social distancing. Mm. Will, it, will we continue to see people come together? I do not know, but what I, this is what I know, Andrew, yeah. that things are going to change. Mm. Our client consumer behavior is going to change. And let me there give you a, a couple here. of examples. Mm. When this came, and David touched on our digital capabilities and mm. how clients have gone on to digital. Mm. But suddenly clients have found that, look, I actually do not need to mm. go to the bank to this, this, this transaction. Oh, yes. Do you think they're going to come post-COVID? No, they're now, they're, they're, they're now intact. They're already into the web. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Winding this conversation exactly. up, for the benefit <laughs> of the viewer who is actually with Stan Beacon and was worried about the loans, mm. and you've um, expounded more about it, they're now much more confident to actually make the decision. Yeah. How best can they get in contact with um, the Stan Big Bank, and how best can they have this done expeditiously? Okay. So I think the first thing, just to summarize, the, the Guamao platform is an online platform. Okay. So the agent is not someone standing there. It's an mm. online platform. And just like you see eBay, mm. all the traders are there. So some that you're already buying from already exist. Mm. And others, they just find them and they can, they mm. can link them. So, but beyond um, how do our clients contact us? And I think that's one thing that we have to do as bankers, not just as Stanbic Bank, as mm. bankers. Mm. Our clients need to see us the way they see their doctors and their priests. To be able to come with confidence. Religiously. We, no, not even religious, <laughs> but with, oh, with confidence. To yes. say that when I talk to my banker, mm. the banker is on my side. And they can talk to us without any commitment. So, mm. because every time you talk to someone, they think they want them to sign on a red line mm. and sign here and read here. And sign here and come back problems. tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> but the idea is what first talk to your banker. Because as the new normal comes, the fundamentals remain the same. Yeah. And I don't know if you've played sport. The harder the game gets, mm. the more disciplined you have to be. And I think that's why I talk about financial fitness. Mm. You have to be setting goals. Mm. You have to start looking at what is important and cut out mm. certain things. I mean, we used to think we needed two cars at home. Now a car that can't leave home. So do you really need a car? And I'm talking with Israel and saying, what, I need to walk more often to town. How do I cut my costs? Even before I go into relief. Mm. Because these loans we are postponing is people's money. The people who did well and saved earlier, the ones who give us the money and we lend it out. So they mm. still want to get paid. So the disciplines remain the disciplines. And even that is important. Oh yeah. And then so how do you contact us? Uh, we have a 24 hour call center, triple C U G mm. at standbeek.com or a toll free uh, toll free line, uh, 0800 mm. 150 150 mm. or 0800 250 250. Mm. And don't contact us only when you have problems. Mm. You know? <laughs> contact us even when you want to do big things. 
And, and that, that, that's the problem. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> people call when I'm they're already... I'm glad you've they, mentioned that. People will always call the bank when the app is down, <laughs> when, <laughs> yeah. when I can't get my money. Yeah, but so I want to make an investment. Mm. You know, right now, if you had a house you're building, mm. and I'm one of those, your house is there, your capital is seated. Mm. But if you think about the money markets, government is still borrowing, mm. you can still earn your rates, you know, so where should your money go? How do you spread your risk? Where mm. should you save? What should you do? These are things that are forward-looking versus, ah, now, busy. Mm. Uh, please come and, yeah, so. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of our conversation today. It was an honor to have that uh, the bankers, they've explained to us how money works and what exactly we need to do post-COVID-19. One thing I'm sure is that you and I are now more confident to go to the bank and we talk to them. The same way we talk to our counselors or we talk to our reverends and uh, clerics, whatever the case it is. Well, that would bring us to the end of this conversation. Thank you so much for spending some time to come to us. Thank you so and much, we Andrew. did have this conversation with social distancing. So if you're <laughs> home and you're watching, it's the same, I think, at yes, the banks. Absolutely. People standing in, you in know, shoes. in these kind of distances. Mm -hmm. So Keep safe, stay home, wash your hands as many times as you can. And um, I'll be back shortly with the birthdays. Good morning. Well, many of you today are celebrating your birthdays, and I understand a couple of you um, already celebrating your birthdays. Uh, people who were born during COVID-19, I want to say uh, one thing is that you're surely very, very lucky. At least now we can have your friends and family celebrate with you at home without anyone moving. I'm trying to get to the birthdays. Uh, those who are celebrating their birthdays today, how I hope my network is a little slow. Well, all I can say is that from NTV a group and, of course, the Nation Media Group, we want to wish you a happy, my network is a little slow, but we want to wish you a happy, happy birthday. Regardless of what the situation is, make the use of the moment and let's have the best of your, your holidays. So please, you need to be much more safe. Make sure that while you're at home, you don't allow guests to come through. If anyone is coming, please let them sanitize wash their hands, and beyond that, in case you identify any other person with COVID-19-like symptoms, please report that case as fast as you can to your RDC, to your LC1. I want to send out my shouts out to people of, uh, 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 that is, uh, Mutukula side, those who identified one person, and the ones in Masindi who identified this person, and they went to the LC, the LC didn't operate and react immediately. But you went overboard and you went to the RDC. So that kind of vigilancy, it's what we need at such critical times. I'm Andrew Chamagero. And shortly after me, of course, Mwasuzam Jay is coming up with Farida Nakaziwe. Have a lovely morning.